When you look at a guy like Jimmy, who's never played a postseason game, what's that going to be like for him, do you think, knowing who he is? I don't think it's going to be any different. Um, feels the same size, you know, ball's the same size. He'll be fine. What is different for you come playoff time? I mean, does the intensity go up, or how, how would you describe this? More people asking you questions about things that you already answered questions about. Um, that's about it for us. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the game's the same. Um, you go out there, you play hard, you execute. If you execute well enough, you win. If you don't, you go home. Uh, is it better to face a team that you haven't faced before in the year at this point or not? It doesn't matter. Yeah, you got time to prepare for them. Um, you're well prepared either way. You know, if you played them before, I guess, you you know, it's a little easier on lighter load on the coaches. Um, but, yeah, it's it's the same. You prepare, you know, you get the looks. You, you go out there and you got to execute. What kind of lift does it give you guys defensively to get D, Quan, and, and Tart back this week? And just oh, it would be great. There's three veteran players who, who, who are starters on this defense who, who make an impact. Um, and, you know, they all play at a high level, so it would be great to have them back. Sanders said yesterday that guys like Debo and KB, he tells you that he keeps you guys young. How important is that just this week with the playoff atmosphere just keeping free and loose and all that? Well, I mean, those kids, I mean, it's all season. Um, you know, like I said, it's no different than any other week. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a great, great time. You know, those guys are going to go out there, have a good time and, and execute like they know how. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we leave the storylines and the pageantry to the to the media and the fans. Um, you go out there and you execute, you win. You don't execute, you go home. Uh, you know, the impact that home field advantage has. You had it in Seattle. Uh, what would you like to tell the people of their impact will do on Saturday? An well, actual sporting impact on the game. Well, I mean, like I said, it's no different than the regular season. You know, if they make um, noise when offense, their offense is on the field um, and it can cause false starts and, and trouble with communication, that'd be great. Um, if not, sit back and enjoy the show. Sherm, uh, there's a lot of talk right now about diversity and hiring in the NFL and maybe the lack thereof. Um, at the same time, you guys have a staff member who's in a national TV ad who's an example of some diversity. I'm wondering, what, what do you think of having Katie Sowers on this? I know you don't. You know, she works on the other side of the ball, but what do you think having her on the staff means for the team and, and what can be done for more diversity? Um, I think it's great. You know, she does a great job. Uh, you know, she does a great job with our receivers and, and preparing them and making sure they, they're prepared week in and week out, you know, obviously along with Wes and Miles. Um, but I think it's, 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 it's always going to be a challenge in this game, you know, whether it's uh, male, female, or whether it's coaches of color. Um, getting head coaching gigs, I think it's always going to be a conversation. You know, it's the owners still look a certain way, and they still come from a from a very old background. Um, so it's 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 going to be this way until things change. You know, and no matter how much people say about it, no matter how much people say, "Oh, Rooney Rule," you know, you got to interview these guys. You know, the coaches will still look a certain way for the most part. You know, every now and then there'll be coaches that. I mean, owners that go out of the, the normal norm and, and hire some coaches. But I think it's unfortunate because, you know, there's a lot of qualified, very qualified um, coaches of color and female coaches uh, that deserve a job and deserve to, to, to get opportunity to be head coaches. I think, you know, sometimes in this game it gets into the cycle of, you know, just old school, just like the combine, you know. The 40 and all that is obsolete and it's dumb. You know, people are really fast and can't play football. But every year you sit there and, and they're, oh, my God, look at this guy ran a 4-3. And you, you look up and the all-pro team is full of guys who ran 4-4, 4-5 and, you know, didn't, didn't go out the combine and kill it. But, you know, they're all pros in this league. And then the coaching is the same. You know, the coaches, you can be terrible at a, as a head coach. And, hey, no matter what, in a couple more years, you're going to get another job and you're going to get recycled back if you look a certain way. And that's an that's a unfortunate part. You know, obviously, Robert Sala is a, is a person of color and, and, and got an interview. But... Um, you know, I think Lovey Smith, uh, you know, there's, there's tons of coaches out there that deserve a head coaching job, uh, be enemy. Uh, but you know, those guys aren't even getting the look and the ones that are getting the look are just getting it so they can check the Rooney rule box off. But you know, at, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you talk about it, um, because it's not changing, you know, the people who could change it, make billions and billions of dollars and they can care less. Uh, uh, having having worked with Sala uh, closely, do you think that he is um, deserving of that head coaching job? I 100 percent um, believe he's deserving of a head coaching job. He's done a great job. He commands the room really well. He has a great way of relating to his players and holding them accountable. Um, but like I said before, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I think. You know, the people who make those decisions don't seem like they're hiring people of color very often. So.
What do you anticipate as being the biggest challenge going up against the Vikings offense? Uh, just being disciplined. You know, they run the, they run the ball well. Um, Kurt is very efficient for what he does. He doesn't turn the ball over. He doesn't make very many mistakes. Um, so just being on the details just like they are and, and being locked in for, for 60 minutes. Can go from with Akello last week to Mosley. Can you talk about those two? What you've seen from those say, guys? say that one more time. The decision everything. to go from Akello to Mosley last week. Can you talk about those two? How they've been practicing? Oh, both of them have been practicing really well, and both of them have played well um, throughout the season. You know, obviously, I don't I don't make those decisions, so you'd have to ask Kyle or or Salah or Joe, whoever uh, makes those calls. But both of them have been preparing really, really well, and both of them are ready to go. Uh, you when you saw the game, the Minnesota New Orleans game, you as a cornerback, what do you think about that Rudolph play? Was it uh, pass interference or not? Offensive pass interference? Uh, I don't. I don't feel the way either way. You know, I mean, you you play DB in this league, you learn to play with your hands behind your back, tied up, one leg, um, because that's just how it is. You know, it doesn't matter what I think about that play. They didn't call it, so it, it's touchdown in this game. Um, if 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 the DB would have grabbed his hand, they probably would have called defensive pass interference and gave him another chance. So. You know, that's what the league wanted when they came up with these rules, and that's what they're getting. You mentioned Cousins' efficiency. What, what distinguishes him from other quarterbacks? What makes him as effective as he is? You think? Well, he throws the ball away when he, when he needs to. Um, he throws the ball into the ground. He throws the ball um, into a spot when he has somebody open. Um, you know, at times when other quarterbacks would force it in there, he doesn't. Um, you know, he, he looks down the field. He, he checks everything. He checks every box, and then he, he goes to his outlets when he needs to. Uh, and he, he's not afraid to, to do that. He, he doesn't get impatient. Um, he'll take the check downs all game if, you, if, if that's what, what the defense gives him. Emmanuel was in here last yesterday one. talking about how Kendrick Bourne and Debo Samuel kind of are important, that youth is important for the ecosystem of the team. Do you believe the same thing? Oh, 100%. 100%. Youth, you know, they're, they're, they're too young to know any better. And that, that's always good. You know, when you're too young to know any better, then the circumstances don't matter. You just get to play football one more time. And, um, and that's what these guys are thinking. And that's, that's what you appreciate about youth, you know. Um, they get another opportunity to go out there and, and do their dances and, and do all their choreographed handshakes. And, you know, as a team, you appreciate it. All right, thanks, Thank you. Fred Boyle will be right in.